Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Integers as Ordered Pairs, Part 1. Another title of this might be Coordinates in the Coordinate Plane, Part 1. It's incredibly important because here we start to conquer the concept of graphing. And as we go forward in math, we're going to be graphing everything. We'll be graphing lines, we'll be graphing points. Later on in math, you'll graph different shape curves that we have uh, use for in everyday life to calculate almost anything that we do with modern technology. So graphing on this what we call coordinate plane is going to be really, really important. I promise you it's not difficult, uh, but we do have to do some basic work in the beginning. So let's take a look at what a coordinate plane looks like. So here's your handy dandy coordinate plane. It looks very, very complicated at first, but I want you to take a deep breath and just push that away because by the next few minutes it'll be like second grade math to you because we'll make it very simple. So we already know about the number line, right? So I want you to ignore all of these numbers and ignore all of these numbers. The number line, just picture it being this horizontal black line, right? You have zero in the middle, which I have not labeled, zero's in the middle. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it goes on forever that way in the positive numbers. And then the negative numbers go negative one, negative two, negative three, on to negative infinity in this direction. So this horizontal black line is uh, a number line. If you ignore everything else, it's just a number line we've learned before. Positive numbers, negative numbers. Now we're going to give this number line a special name. We're going to call it the x-axis. So I'm going to put x over here in the corner. X just, we have to give it a label because we have another one of these number lines running up and down, so we have to call it something. We're going to call it the x-axis. Axis just means number line, so it's the x number line, right? Now let's create another number line that runs this direction, but now the positive numbers go up like this, up to positive infinity, and then from zero going down, they go again negative numbers onto negative infinity. So it's literally the same number line as this, but rotated and going up and down, and so we now have two number lines, one going this direction, we call it the x-axis, and then we have another number line going up and down, we have a name for that one called the y-axis. So we have the x-axis, which is horizontal, and the y-axis, which is vertical. When we put two of these things together, it allows us to plot points all over the place. Because remember, in the x-direction, I can put a point anywhere on this line, and on the y direction, I can put a point anywhere on this line as well. But if I have a point, uh, if I give a, 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 a point along x and a point along y, then I may be able to go farther along x this way and then up along y, and I'll be able to, for instance, have coordinates for any point that I want anywhere in this plane. So whereas before you learned about a number line, here we have two number lines and they form what we call a coordinate plane. So this thing on the board is called a coordinate plane. We also call it a Cartesian plane, or you might hear it called an x-y axis. So let's conquer our first problem here. We want to plot the point A. We're going to call it A, it was just a label, and that point is going to be represented by the coordinates 2 comma 6. So let me explain what we have here. Any point on this plane here, you put it in parentheses, and you have to have two numbers. Why do you have to have two numbers? Because there's two number lines here. There's an x number line, and there's a y number line, x-axis and y-axis. Now what you have to remember is that the first number in a coordinate point like this is always the x number, and the second number is always the y number. So the first number you encounter is always x. That's the horizontal uh, direction. And the second number you encounter is always y. That's the vertical direction, always. So it's always x comma y, x comma y. Say it a few times, x comma y, x comma y, x comma y. It's always like that. So in the future, I'm not gonna write x and y. I need you to know that the first number is always x and the second is always y. So what this means is we're gonna go two units in the x direction. All right, we're gonna go two units in the x direction. Now the way I have it set up is, this is one unit and this is two units. You might see these lines between. Well, if this is one, then this line right between would be a half. And if this is one and this is two, then between would have to be one and a half, and then two, and then two and a half, and then three, and then three and a half, and then four, and four and a half. So you can kind of ignore the lines in the middle for this lesson, but just know that on the coordinate axis, you can plot you know, fractions and decimals and all kinds of things, but 
for here in the beginning, we're only going to talk about the integers, the whole numbers, which are positive and negative. So if this point goes along two units in the x direction, that means this is zero, this is the x direction, we go one unit, two units over. But this point is also telling me that I have to go up six units in the y direction. So what I do is I go one, two units in the x, and then one, two, uh, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six in the y direction. So I have to go up in the y direction six and two in the x direction. Let's do that one more time. One, two in the x, and then one, two, three, four, five, six in the y direction. And we're calling this point point A. So we're going to plot it in the plane, and then I'm going to put a label next to it saying point A. Now what we have done is our first example of plotting a point in the xy plane. And it's the first step in a journey that we're going to take in math that's going to go in crazy directions. I can't even tell you right now. We're going to use it so much going forward. The first step is to learn how to plot points. And the next step, we'll talk about learning how to plot lines. And then we'll talk about learning how to draw different shapes, which will have applications in real life from everything from building bridges to building computers. And you just have to trust me a little bit. Chemistry, physics, all of it uses graphing. So here, this point A has the coordinates 2 for x and 6 for y. And you can just read them off the axis. The x-axis is 2 and the uh, y-axis is 6 there. All right? Now for problem number two, instead of plotting the point, I'm going to put a point in the, in the xy plane, and then we are going to read the coordinates off. So let me see if I can figure out where to put this point right here. It's going to be right here. Let me just double check myself. Yes. And I'm going to call this point B. So here's the point. What I want you to do is tell me the coordinates of this point. So first you have to know that the first number, what we're going to do is we're going to write down the coordinates of point B. So it has to be two numbers. The first number we read is going to be the x number and the second is the y number. So what we do is we start here and we go over until we hit the intersection point. It's five for the x value, five for the x value there. So we put five in the x location like this. And then once we get to five, we go up one, two. This is the y value right here at two. So the x value is five and the y value goes up two. So it's five comma, Two. You always go along x first, then you go along y, and you can read it off there. So 5, 2. 5, 2 is the final answer for the coordinates of b. All right? So that was problem number two. Now for problem number three, for problem number three, I want to plot the point c, and we're going to give it a coordinates 2, comma, negative 7. So here is our first example where we have a negative number for one of the coordinates, which is perfectly fine. We, can, we do that all the time in math. We have negative coordinates and positive coordinates. So let's see if we can figure it out here. The x value is always the first number, which is 2, and the y is negative 7. So the x value is 2, and the y is negative 7. The x value is 2 means we go over 2. But for the y value, notice the y value is negative. So we do not go up. These are positive values of y. We have to go over 2 and down to negative 7. And negative 7 down here is right here. You can read it right off of there. So you go positive 2 for x, and then down 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, then 6. Let me check. And then 7 right here. So this is our point, we believe. And we're going to call it point C. Let's double check ourselves. 2 for x, and then down to negative 7 for y. And that's the coordinate point of point C. All right? Great. Next, let me go ahead and put a point on the board, and then we're going to read the uh, coordinates off here. So we're going to put this point right here, and we're going to call it point D. Right? What would be the coordinates of point D? First, Let's go ahead and say that D is going to have some value. It's going to have two coordinates, x comma y. So the first thing we have to do is start at zero and go along x. But notice that these are the negative numbers. So, of course, the x component will be negative, right? The x value will be negative, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. This is where we stop because there's where the point is at negative 4. So the x value is negative 4. We stopped right there. The y value is positive. Positive 1, positive 2, positive 3. 
So the y value is positive three. So the coordinates of this point is negative four for x and positive three for y. Negative one, two, three, four for x, positive one, two, three for y. And that is point D. We are gonna do so many of these that you're going to get so comfortable with what you're doing. It's not even gonna be funny. All right, let's plot the point uh, E and it's gonna be negative one comma negative one. Negative one comma negative one. So the X value is negative one and the Y value is negative one. So if we start at zero, which is the, what we call it the origin, which is the center of the, where everything crosses of the X and the Y axis, our point was negative one for X and negative one for Y. Negative one means we go, go to the left for X and negative one for Y means we come down here. Now, unfortunately I have kind of a little, a little mark here for my negative one in the way. So I'm gonna kind of move that a little bit, something like this, all right? So negative one for X here and negative one for Y means I go over to the left for X for, for negative one and then I have to go down because Y is also negative one. So the point is right here, negative one for X, negative one for Y and that is point E. So I'll just kind of put an E right there. Negative one for X, negative one for Y. So it's very close to the origin. These points here are far away from the origin but point E is very, very close in distance from the origin. Now let me stop for just a second and take, a, take a, a minute to talk about what we would use this for. We have more problems, but let's just talk for a second, all right? What we do when we build things, a lot of times in real life, is we make a coordinate system so we can measure everything, right? Let's say we're building a city, right? In the center of the city is City Hall. That's where the, the, the government sits, where everyone's making the decisions, right? And then from City Hall, we build the community, right? We have a library somewhere. We have you know, a general store somewhere. We have some farmland where we grow the food over there. We have a schoolhouse. We have some communities where people live. Right? So when we build a city, we're gonna build roads that go different directions and we're going to put the different, the different things we're building for our city on the map, basically. So what we can do is build a map of everything's location and we can give a coordinate to the library. We can call it point B as the library and we can say it's five blocks to the right and maybe two blocks up. That's where the library is gonna be. And we're gonna say that the, the farmland is gonna be a little farther away from the city center. It's gonna be, it's gonna be in the X direction going east, let's say, two blocks to the east or two kilometers to the east, and it's gonna go up six kilometers toward the north, and that's where the farmland is going to be. And then over here for these points that have negative numbers in them, all it means is, let's say this is the general store, it means it's four kilometers to the west, to the left of City Hall, and then it's gonna be three kilometers up toward the north. So left can be west, right, the negative numbers can be west in other words, the positive numbers can be east, and then north can be positive and south can be negative. So you see we can put everything on the map and we can have an organized structure of what we're doing so we can write it all down and keep track of it. And the negative numbers are just telling us that we're going to the left of the center and the positive or down from center and the positive numbers can just mean we're going to the right or to the up from the center. So we have real uses for this. This is just one example but you're gonna have to trust me, we use this all the time. All right, let's take a look at another point. Let's say I have a point at, actually let me make sure I didn't skip one. Make sure I didn't skip one, yeah. Okay, let's take a look at another point. Let's say that I have a point uh, at right around, let me just double check myself here, right around here. There's my point. Actually, I'm gonna have to move my little, my little negative symbol for the negative six. I'll put it a little closer. Right? So here's my point way down here. What are the coordinates of this point? And this point, we're gonna call it point F. We're gonna have an X coordinate and a Y coordinate for point F. Right? What is the X coordinate of point F? Well, you have to go only one unit to the left, negative one, and then we go down six units because it's negative six. So the coordinate point is negative one, and then negative six, negative one for X and then negative six for Y. So it's negative one and negative six, negative one, negative six. Notice if you accidentally flip these around, it's a completely different point because negative six comma, ne let's do negative six comma negative one, negative six comma negative one would be here, which is a completely different point than down here. So you have to get the order correct. It's always X comma Y, all right? Now for our next point, 
we're going to plot g at 7 comma negative 2. 7 comma negative 2. That means 7 for x, negative 2 for y. 7 for x, negative 2 for y. And actually, I think I forgot to put that point F was down here. We're going to label this point F. That was point F. Sorry about that. All right, so we're going to look at point G, 7 comma negative 2, 7 comma negative 2. That means 7 for x, which is way over here at the border of my chart. I only go to 7 here. And then negative 2, which means I go down 1, 2 right here. So that means this point is right here, 7 for x. And then I went down 1 and then 2 units, which you can read over here for negative 2 units for y. So this is point G. That was at positive 7 and negative 2. All right. Almost done. Let me put a plot, a point on the board, and we're going to read the point off here. It's point H, uh, and it's going to be right around here. Let's put this guy right here, point H. What are the coordinates of point H? You read X comma Y. So in the X direction, it's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. I stop there because it lines up. And then I go down, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So it's negative 5 comma negative 3. Negative 5 comma negative 3. So we say that H is negative 5 comma negative 3. Negative 5 comma negative 3. That's the value of H. I think we only have two more. Two more. So let's go ahead and plot. Let's plot. Uh, let's see, H after H comes I. And so i is going to have a value of negative 6 comma positive 6. Negative 6 comma positive 6. Negative 6 for x, positive 6 for y. Negative 6 for x is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Negative 6 for x, positive 6 for y. Positive 6 for y is 1, 2, 3, then 4, then 5, then 6. I stop right here. So here is going to be an intersection of that point, and that is point i. Negative 6 for x means I go to negative 6, and then positive 6 for y means I go up here. Notice this is positive 6 for y, negative 6 for x. All right, and here is our last problem. I want to put this on the board at this location, and you tell me what the points of this thing is. And it's going to be point uh, j, h-i-j, right? So what is point j here? What point do we have? x comma y. Well, we start at the origin and we go over one unit for x and we also go up one positive unit for y. So x is one and y is also positive one. So it's one comma positive one, one comma positive one. All right, so believe me, I remember when I learned this the first time and the very first time I learned it, it was quite confusing to me why we use it and why do we care about it, right? Uh, and so I'm trying to do two things here. I'm trying to give you enough practice so it doesn't look foreign to you. Uh, and you only get that through working it. You only get that by plotting points and by reading points. So they're two different skills. You have to learn to look at a point and read the coordinates off, and you have to also learn how to read coordinates and then put the dot on the, on the proper location. Those are two different things. So that's why we did both kinds of problems. Also, you have to get in the idea and the habit that the only way you read this thing is x comma y, x comma y, x comma y, x comma y, and the center is here, and you measure x, first and then you measure y. That's what you have to do. So I'd like you to watch this again, solve it with your own little coordinate plan. You can sketch it on a sheet of paper and try to solve all of these yourself. And when you feel like you're getting the hang of it, follow me on the part two. This concept is so important. I want to give you more practice with reading and writing points in the coordinate plane. We also call that using the idea of integers, positive negative numbers, as an ordered pair. By the way, this is called an ordered pair right? Because it is a pair of points that has a certain order to it. X comma Y, X comma Y, X comma Y. Ordered pairs are pairs of numbers that are in a specific order. That's why they're called ordered pairs. We plot them and we read them off of coordinate planes. I'd like you to practice all of these. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll continue building your skills.